Hey guys, John here. Thought I'd put together my thoughts on grinding saw chain. Now, in the chainsaw world, just the word or the thought, grinding saw chain causes some people to just flip out. You know, you're gonna ruin the chain, you're gonna harden the tooth, you're gonna burn the teeth, and a lot of that kind of stuff is still out there. And I would agree, <laughs> if we don't understand what we're doing, it's like any tool, right? The tool can help you do a good job better, quicker, or if you don't know or understand the tool and what, what the goal is, things can go south. Let me get started with the actual grinder. <clears throat> Um, for me, what works for me, I want to have a grinder where the disc, okay, the disc is turning into the cutting edges. And I believe there's a lot of, there's still grinders out there, I think that's, there's a number of them, where on one side of your chain, the stone grinds in, and then when you turn things around, now the stone is coming out. Personally, I find it difficult to get consistency of sharpness from right side to left side if the disc is cutting in two different directions. So for me, I'm using this Max, M-A-X-X, -X, no affiliation whatsoever, it's just what I use. Now, on that, that's one thing, stone going into the tooth on both sides. The other is the, the actual grinding tool. Now we use the word stone. A lot of your grinders will come through with an actual stone. I don't know what it's made of, but I don't use them. I don't even have an old one here. Those need to be dressed on a regular basis. Dressed meaning as the stone is sharpening the tooth, the hardness of the metal will uh, a is abrasive against the stone, the stone loses its shape, and you need to actually take a, a block of rock that they give you, so yeah, and you reshape the edge of the, the cutting stone in order to maintain the proper shape of your tooth. It's doable, but you go through a lot of stones, it's a maintenance issue that I just don't care for. I choose to go a little more money, okay, might say a lot more money. This is an ABN disc I got from Bailey's. You can get them, saw suppliers can find these sort of things. This is 200 plus dollars. And it's a good thing that it's a good disc, lasted me a long time. I've gone to what I have on here now as a diamond disc. Um, that's $100, it's working great for me. I think either one is fine. Um, read the directions on the discs. There is a cleaning to them because there is an oil and some woody residue left on your chains. So there's a cleaning to them. And remember that you can turn them around because of the, um, the actual, uh, the, the grinding material can actually get kind of polished in one direction. So you can actually take the disc off the grinder and turn it around so it's going in the other way. And um, that's what I prefer to use. A little more money up front for sure, but you know, time is money and I'm looking for a good sharp chain. Now, let's go to the tooth. I always like to take the approach with, um, it's not just this is how you do it and just do it this way and you'll be fine. It's understanding the why. So going to the tooth itself, what we want to understand here is the sawtooth is actually made of two different kinds of steel. I've been to the factory where they actually make this, the, uh, the cutter teeth. When the metal comes into the factory, it's basically just flat stock. It's a flat piece of steel. That bar is fed into a machine with a whole series of cutting dies. And they showed us that the first die that hits that piece of steel, really all you see is the outline shape of the tooth. Then it advances, and the next die is going to cut a little deeper. So it's just that that line becomes a little more prominent. 
there's a whole series of those cutters and each cutter cuts that steel a little more and you think about the shape of the tooth out the very last end of the product process once that's cut then it actually has to be shaped and bent so you think about doing that the steel cannot be too hard or it would break when they tried to bend it and it's interesting that machine it sounds like a machine gun when it's running it's it's rapid fire now if that's all they did and they assembled our chain when we sharpen it the cutting edge would have no strength that metal that they make that tooth out of is relatively soft you know our file can cut it or a stone can cut it so what they need to do is they put a layer of chrome on the top and on the side and what I did with my model here is trying to illustrate that layer of chrome essentially I took a piece of duct tape and I'm hoping the light can get it there but just a piece of duct tape to show you the idea of that chroming process it's actually the chrome that gives the cutting edge its strength so if you watch filing or grinding under you know something that can magnify a little bit or you've got good eyes okay you can actually see this chrome and when we're filing with a hand file that chrome actually flakes off in tiny little chunks and if you want a quick illustration of how hard chrome is try taking a file and going across the top of the tooth like this and you'll find that the tooth will dull the file because that chrome is so hard. You really can't file chrome. It comes off of the tooth in almost like microscopic little chips. With that in mind, let's go to the grinding. Where I see a lot of folks can run into some trouble with grinding is grinding too aggressively. So I'm gonna put in here a little clip of a video and you're gonna notice, I hope you'll notice that when I come down with the disc, I come all the way to the bottom and I'm actually not touching the cutting edge yet. I come down to the bottom very close and I'm physically flexing the grinder. I'm actually, you might want to say, almost bending very, very slightly so that I can tap and you see that just back and forth, back and forth. And if it works for you, it really is like a file going back and you know back across your, your tooth. So that meant that's going to, if it's done correctly, that takes away this whole burning issue. We're not really laying that disc right in there. We're really sharpening the tooth. We're not repairing the tooth. Okay, so even if that's done very carefully, you'll notice here, and I'll put the picture in, how that chrome and coming back to here now remember that chrome is very 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 thin that chrome can be left with a little bit of a ridge across that top plate it seems to be pretty consistent that the side cutting edge because of the way the grinder is coming in at a pretty sharp angle it cleans the side cutting edge off really well it's this top cutting edge that the disc tends to roll that chrome up. And I'll show you a picture there of what I mean. You can see it. It's really, really thin. So if you read the manuals on the grinders, usually they'll tell you that as a user, after you've sharpened the tooth, that microscopic little layer of chrome, you want to take, and I, you can use a piece of wood, a, a piece of plastic, you know, really anything, and you see how you can just fold that off, you bend it down, and it, it breaks off. That chrome is so hard, it, 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 it'll come right off very easily. Why is it important to do that? Okay, if we don't do that, and we just leave it, when that tooth touches the very first piece of wood, you know, it might be the bark of the tree, say. If that little layer of chrome is still stuck up there, the tooth touches that bark and it's going to peel that chrome backwards. 
and it will peel that little lip, if you will, that little ridge of chrome, and when it peels it backwards, it's going to expose that softer metal underneath. Now your tooth, your chain will continue to cut, but it's not gonna hold its edge the way it should. That's why it's so important that you take that little edge off you know, with a, with a you know, small piece of wood or whatever you use there to make sure that that's nice and clean. Okay, now sharpening. A couple things I suggest works for me is good lighting, okay? So I'm gonna put up a picture here and this, I'm hoping this will illustrate what I'm looking at. I wanna have a light and I'll, here's a picture of the light that I use. I wanna have a good light that I can move from side to side to keep that light angle the way I need it. I want that light to be coming in from behind the tooth. And here's a picture of using this two by four that would represent the cutting edge that is dull. This cutting edge needs to be sharpened. Then as I touch it with the disc, that, you know, that tapping with the disc, I break, take some steel away and you'll notice the second picture here where that shadow line, the shadow line now is much thinner, same light angle. I've simply sharpened the cutting edge so that that shadow line has now become very, very small. That's what I'm looking at as I'm sharpening. Keep in mind, there's a point of, of you know, diminishing return. You'll, you can't make that completely disappear. And you'll see, you'll, you'll get the idea, if this is new to you, that there's no point in keep going. You're, you're going to end up as, as sharp as it can get, remembering that that chrome does have a bit of thickness to it. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for as I tap in there and uh, I'm watching that shadow line. Good lighting helps. Now, another thing that I do is <coughs> I'll use these. Works for me, okay? Getting long up there, I've been doing this a while, the eyes aren't what they used to be. And I just find these glasses, they make things a little brighter, a little sharper and it allows me to sharpen not only more accurately, but quicker because I can simply see what I'm doing yeah, much better. Now, I'm not gonna get into angles and all that sort of stuff. That's in the manual. If it helps, you know, click on, I've got a couple of videos here on how saw teeth cut wood. Okay, that can help with understanding why the angles are the way they are. Um, I always just wanted to address some very common issues with actually using a grinder. Another thing that I do, I use my grinder is for my harvester chain. Simple little habit that I have gotten into is I'll lay the chain on, they call it the saddle, and I'm going to run it all the way around. Very quickly. Okay. The point of that is to simply check it out very quickly and I don't want to spend three, four, five minutes sharpening a chain when all of a sudden I come to a, a link that's broken. And it's not uncommon with harvesters, you have so much power there that sometimes it can actually break a link. And I've kind of, something I got to repair later and I've taken all the time to sharpen it. So that's just one quick thing there. One last note on the grinder is as far as choices of grinder, I mentioned I like to have the stone going in to both sides of the chain. The other is you want to have a good saddle, meaning that whatever this mechanism is, you want to have a system that holds the tooth like absolute. You can't have the tooth moving around a little bit. That's simply taking away the accuracy from your grind. Okay. I hope that maybe takes some of the um, hocus pocus out of grinding. I'm happy to answer questions, you know, throw them in the comments. So, hope to see you in the woods sometime. Take care.